Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's virtual study presented by Christians Under Construction, CUC Sunday School at the New Sunday Mount Baptist Church, where Reverend Brandon Blake is our pastor, Reverend Ivan Carter is superintendent of CUC, and I am Priscilla Smith, assistant superintendent, and also one of the facilitators of the adult class two team. Would you pray with me before we get started, please? This morning, our Heavenly Father, it's again that we come. We're humbled in our spirits, Lord, that you allow us to celebrate you, to serve you, to worship and praise you. Thank you for giving us guidance. Thank you for allowing us to come through the means of virtual study to discuss your word. I pray your continued blessings over the New Sunny Mount family. Thank you for the placement of Reverend Brandon Blake as our pastor. We pray your continued blessings over the ministries and over the leadership of Pastor Blake. We pray that something will be said during this brief study of the word that will aid those who hear in their daily lives. Again, we give you praise, honor, and glory in all that you've already done and we walk with expectations that our needs will be supplied as you promised in your word. Thank you again for allowing us to come. It's in the blessed name of Jesus that I do pray and continue to believe. Amen and thank God. All right. Today's study topic is the church is united in love and we're going to be using the scripture from Acts chapter 17 with verses 16 through 34 being highlighted. Again, Acts chapter 17 verses 16 through 34. The subject of this week's lesson is the church is united in love. The session in a sentence says, God calls his people to love the people around them and build bridges with them to share the gospel. God calls his people to love people around them and build bridges with them to share the gospel. Paul arrived in Athens to avoid troublemakers in Berea. But while he was there, his heart was stirred by the idolatry of the Athenians. Paul did not miss any opportunity to preach the gospel to those who needed to hear it. Paul was following the example of Jesus, who out of love served others and sacrificed himself for them. The mission application for the lesson today is because we are loved by God and have been saved through his gift of Jesus, we strive to be aware of the spiritual needs of others around us and out of love faithfully share the gospel in relatable ways. On Paul's second mission journey in Athens, he was struck by the adultery of the Athenians. His distress, distress over the spiritual darkness of the city did not lead him to bitterness or despair. Rather, it moved him in action. In chapter 17 of Acts, we get a clear glimpse into Paul's heart for the lost and his burden over people's separation from God. Paul was motivated by love for God and for people. When we are motivated by love for people, it will change the way we try to evangelize. 
Love shapes our tone and enables us not to add barriers or stumbling blocks in front of people beyond the message of the cross and the demands of the gospel itself. Paul met his audience where they were at culturally and spiritually and brought them to the truth of God. And let us remember when we say meet somebody at their needs or we don't want to let that just be a cliche or a, a form of words. We actually want to be as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ we want to be able to peruse our audience and take what we have to say through prayer and allow God to use us to minister to that particular audience. Today's scripture again is from Acts 17 chapter, chapter 17 verses 16 through 34. We will begin with point one which is a heart is burdened for others and this will be utilizing Acts chapter 17 verses 16 through 21. I will be reading from the CSB version. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed when he saw that the city was filled full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with those who worship God as well as in the marketplace every day with those who happen to be there. Some of the Eucoprians and Stoic philosophers also debated with him. Some said, what is this ignorant show-off trying to say? Others replied, he seems to be a preacher of foreign deities because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. They took him and brought him to the Arapagus and said, May we learn about this new teaching you are preaching. Because what you say sounds strange to us, and we want to know what these things mean. Now all of the Athenians and the foreigners resided there, spent their time on nothing else but telling or hearing something new. Okay, let's talk about a heart is burden for others. No matter where Paul found himself, he kept sharing the gospel as was his custom. He went to the local Jewish synagogue first and then he would preach to the Gentiles. In Athens, Paul had a unique motivation for his evangelism. He was distressed in his heart because he was in a city full of idols. He was surrounded by a city full of deceived people and he became jealous for the glory of God. When anything or anyone steals God's glory, we should be jealous for God alone is to receive glory and worship. We should not allow anything to overshadow the Word of God or overshadow God getting the glory. The exclusive path to God is faith alone in the crucified and resurrected Jesus alone. Still, some people will be open to hearing us out just as they were with Paul. The longer Paul waited in Athens for Silas and Timothy, the angrier he got because there were idols all around. The city was like um, a big junkyard of idols. He discussed it with the Jews and anybody else that was like-minded uh, um, and, and at the different meeting places where he where he happened to be, but every day it was his mission 
to go out into the streets and talk with anyone who happened along to begin spreading the truth and to get them to move from the idol worshiping to the true and living God. He really got to know uh, the people of the area. He got to uh, uh, realize how to talk to them, how to share the good news. But just as it is today, when we try to share uh, the word of God with pe with everybody. Everybody's not going to be amenable. Everybody's not going to listen. Some people are going to say, "Oh, what is that person talking about? Why the why is it every time we get into a discussion, it ultimately leads to talking about Jesus the Christ?" This happened with Paul. Some of the people dismissed him, and they were very. They had a method of. Uh, uh, of just saying what a moron he is but there will always be somebody that's willing to take a listen and everything that you say will not fall on deaf ears so that means that you you keep doing what you're doing you you keep your focus you remain steadfast in your preaching, your teaching. You do everything through prayer. You don't just run out and take on something uh, trying to give accolades to yourself. You go through prayer whenever you're evangelizing, even when you're just having a discussion about, about God. The people got together, some of them, and they begin to encourage him and ask him uh, to make a public um, presentation. And, uh, and, and when things got a little quieter, they begin to inquire and, um, and, and, and they begin to accept. There's somebody new among us. And we've not heard anything quite like what he has to say. So those who didn't dismiss what Paul had to say, they began to listen. And as he preached on a daily basis, they began to hear the word of God. Um, the Messenger Bible says, downtown Athens was a great place for gossip. So Paul used this arena not as a place to talk about uh, what people were doing and, and how they were acting or how they lived or anything. He used the format, this arena, to talk about Jesus the Christ. And the, this, his, since his heart was so burdened with the idol uh, worship junkyard, this opportunity for him to step in this uh, place of, uh, of gossip gave him the perfect time to talk about Jesus. All right, let's move on to point two. And this is titled, A Point of Contact is Made. You know, it's a good thing when you're trying to bring others to Christ, get them to listen to you. You need to make that, if you can make that one point, that one point of contact with one person, you never know how that one person will tell somebody, that person will tell somebody else, that person will tell somebody else, and the next thing you know, you're on a roll spreading the word of Jesus Christ. Point two, a point of contact is made comes from Acts 17, verses 22 through 29. Beginning at verse 22, Paul stood in the middle of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that you are extremely religious in every aspect. For as I was passing through and observing the objectives of your worship, I even found an altar on which was inscribed, 
to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by hand. Neither is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives everyone life and breath and all things. From one man, he has made every nationality to live over the whole earth and has determined their appointed times and the boundaries where they live. He did this so that they might seek God and perhaps they might reach out and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Verse 29. Since we are God's offspring, then we shouldn't think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image fashioned after human art and imagination. Before Paul explained the gospel to the Antheans, he took some time to construct a Christian worldview using uh, accessible terminology. In other words, he was meeting them at their level or at, at their point of need. Paul began to establish a point of contact Instead of begin with condemnation or negativity, this is what he said. You're all going to hell, you know, saying something like, you're all going to hell for adultery. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He began by acknowledging that he knew that they had some religious desires. The work of constructing a Christian worldview it's not angry work. It's not negative work. It is a, a gentle build, a slow a pull of hard, concentrated work. What truths are fundamental to a Christian worldview? Paul didn't only present a Christian worldview. He also worked to tear down the confused and incorrect false worldviews of his hearers. You know how uh, misinformation can be passed on and sometimes the truth has to come in and be exposed to people. The real truth, you know, instead of the fake news, you have to give them the real news. That's what Paul did. By presenting the biblical view of God as the one true God, Paul directly confronted the Antheans' ideas about their idol gods. He did not use the statue uh, to the unknown God to lead them to think they were already worshiping the true, true God in ignorance. He used the statue to introduce them to a radical new understanding of God, the I am of the Hebrew scripture. The God who made the world and everything in it, the master of sky and land, does not live in shrines or things that we made by hand. It is a part, if he, if God couldn't take care of himself, he wouldn't be able to do all that he has done. He makes the creatures, the creatures don't make him. He made the human beings, he created us, we did not create ourselves. He started from scratch and he made the entire human race. He made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for a living 
so we could seek after God and not just fumble around in the dark trying to find what way to go but we could actually find Jesus the Christ he doesn't play hide and seek with us he's all out there in the open he's not remote he's always near we don't have to look very far to find him he's not someplace hiding in the bushes he's right there all you got to do is seek you are gonna find him right there in the twinkling of an eye we live and move in Jesus the Christ one of the and, and Paul told him one of your poets already said it we're the God created well if they were the God created it didn't make a lot of sense to think that he hired somebody to make an image or to chisel out something in stone that wouldn't make sense he's already God he was already here from the beginning and then he turned around and created us and everything that is in the world today let's move on to point three the gospel is proclaimed Acts 17 verses 30 through 34 the gospel is proclaimed verse 30 therefore having overlooked the times of ignorance God now commands all people everywhere to repent gives you an opportunity because he has set a day when he's going to judge the world in righteousness by the man he has appointed he has provided proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some began to ridicule him, Paul. But others said, we'd like to hear from you again about this. So Paul left their presence. However, some people joined him and believed, including Dionysus and the Arifagite, a woman named Damaris and others with them. Paul began with the God who created and sustained all things and he closed with the God who judges through his appointment of man. Jesus his son whom he raised from the dead all the preparatory work of building and tearing down that Paul did was to get to Christ. He didn't start negative. He used what he had already learned about them, put it in the perspective of his audience, and then he moved on from there through the Antheans, though the Antheans were ignorant of the one true God. Paul didn't pass judgment on them. He had not judged them yet as they would have probably just run away. And instead of there being more people to listen, there would have been more people to dismiss him. Oh, he talking down to us. We not listening to that. Look, we know a little bit. We not crazy. Can't you hear people saying that? Because people say that to you today. You have to be mindful of your audience. Be mindful how you talk to people. And you don't talk to new Christians or those who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ when you're trying to tell them about it. You don't talk down to them. You could even begin by asking a question or making a positive suggestion. When we tell people about Jesus, we must also call for a response. If you're concerned with how people will respond to you when you share Christ, just look at how they responded to Paul. Some remained skeptical and likely rejected the gospel. You're not going to get everybody. Just like everybody's not going to like you. And there's not one thing that you can do about it. But some people remained after those that were skeptical. Some were curious enough 
and ask to hear a little bit more about what Paul was sharing. Oh, so you say that this Christ can save us from our sin. Hmm, how's he going to do that? Tell me a little bit more about that. So you got to calm yourself down, keep that positive outlet, and begin to share just a little bit more. Share just a little bit more. And finally, there were some people that Paul met and shared the gospel with who actually believed. After they kept coming back, Paul kept sharing day after day. Some kept coming back. Some began, became faithful to God's call. And they began to trust in what Paul said. Trust in what? In the Lord for faithfulness and fruitfulness. And they begin to believe. God overlooks it as long as you don't know any better. But once you learn better, that time is past for him to overlook. You know that saying, once you, once you learn better, you're expected to do better. The unknown is now known. And Jesus is calling for a radical life change. As a matter of fact, he has open hands, open arms, and he's giving you the opportunity to follow him. And that's your radical life change. He said a day though, when the entire human race is going to be judged. So it's not like it's going to, he's going to have this timeline forever and ever. You're going to have to come to him accept him or deny him in his time frame not in your time frame because we're all going to be judged one day and he's already appointed the judge confirming him before any everyone by raising him from the dead who is this judge it's jesus the christ and when Paul was teaching at the phrase raising him from the dead, some of the listeners actually just walked away. They laughed at Paul and started making jokes. But there were some others that said, wait a minute, let me hear what you said again. Explain this to me again. We want to hear some more. But that was it for the day. And once Paul finished, he left. There were still others, it turned out, who were convinced from Paul's teaching then and right there. And they stuck with Paul, including a woman named Damaris. Are you going to stick with, stick with the preachers, the teachers? after hearing the word of God are you going to keep coming back to learn just a little bit more are you going to keep accepting that there is someone greater than you and I are you going to hear the word take the word into your heart use it for your everyday living do have a Recall in your mind as to what Jesus has said, what Pastor Blake or 